Welcome back here to SteveDace.com, Dace's Daily Diatribe, and today we're going to continue our look at the nine most likely people to be on the ballot in Iowa's first in the nation caucuses coming up on February 6, 2012. But instead of looking at their strengths during this series called Fatal Flaws, we're looking at their weaknesses because this is what the other eight opponents of each of these candidates is going to try to exploit for the next several months. Otherwise, if you don't exploit your opponent's weaknesses, they exploit yours. And you get defined by your opponent by your weaknesses. That's why you want to exploit and define your opponent by theirs first. So what are the weaknesses? What are the fatal flaws for every one of these nine candidates that we think are the most likely to be our choices in either the straw poll or the Iowa caucuses themselves? We're taking a look at that in this series. And today, we're going to take a look at entrepreneur former CEO and national conservative activist Herman Cain. Now, to me, the fatal flaw for Herman Cain is, is also what I think a lot of his supporters would say is a strength, and that is that he really has no political experience um, in, in terms of actually being in office whatsoever. Now, I know there's a lot of you watching this right now that are going to say, and I may even be one of you, I'm actually excited about that. I'm, I'm tired of the same old, same old. I'm, I'm tired of politics as usual. I, you know, I think we kind of need an outsider. You remember the movie Dave back in the day? Maybe we need the conservative version of that. Sort of a conservative Dave that just goes in there, no preconceived notions, and just starts shaking people up and asking all the right questions. And that may be true. And, and I might have some sympathy towards that myself. But, you know, being the President of the United States... It's not necessarily a job that you want to get on the job training for. Uh, it is a job of great significance and responsibility. And as we said in a previous video series dealing with Michelle Bachman, you know, a lot of people will be more quick to forgive you compromising your principles or, or committing some kind of act of, of immorality or moral hypocrisy. They might be more inclined to forgive that than they would incompetency or ineffectiveness. And there is no substitute for experience. So to me, Herman Cain's got a very simple task to prove. Uh, and that is, that is, he's got to show people that he can also be the President of the United States. Now he has one advantage that Michelle Bachman in this area doesn't have, and that is that he has some executive experience. He ran a national corporation at Godfather's Pizza. So he's had to delegate authority, he's had to put the right infrastructure in place, he's had to cast a vision and then see it follow through. Those are a lot of the same skills that a President of the United States needs to have as well in terms of leadership. But it's a lot different doing that for shareholders than it is with other countries and some of them with nuclear weapons pointed at you. So that's where you're going to look at a Herman Cain and you're going to tell a lot about how effective he could be as a president based on the kind of organization of support he could put together in his campaign. Can he raise the money necessary? Can he get the volunteer network? Can he stay on message and articulate a governing vision for America? If he can do those four things consistently in the campaign, then I think that would give you a good hint that he could do those sorts of things as the President of the United States as well. But if his fundraising numbers are down, uh, if he struggles to put together the right volunteer network, if he's sort of all over the place message-wise, a little inconsistent, he's known for not showing up on time to campaign events, and, and things seem a little haphazard, I think those are danger signs for Herman Cain, and they play into his weakness as a guy that may say a lot of the right things and say them very charismatically on the campaign trail, but, you know, you're not, you don't just get to be the ideologue-in-chief as the President of the United States. You've actually got to run the corporation known as the United States of America as well. And that's a $6 trillion budget and up to 29,000 employees in the executive branch. So much like Michelle Bachman, Herman Cain also has to prove that he can be the President of the United States. And while he may have some experience that she does not have that gives him an advantage over her in one aspect of this area, he also will not have her name ID nor her revenue in order to state his case. And that's why his margin for error for Herman Cain is much slimmer than hers, because he's not going to get a second chance to make a first impression. Thanks for joining us here today at SteveDace.com. You're welcome to check us out on Facebook. Don't forget Twitter at Steve underscore Dace. Email us, Steve at SteveDace.com. God bless.